Gentlemen, we are back once again. Top 10 things we hate about football. So this is not things we hate about City, not things we hate about United, but things that we hate about football in general. I'm going to go first. Tell you what I hate about football. Pedantic offsides. Could his ass have scored? Could his elbow have scored? Could his head have scored? Was his nose offside? Is his earlobe offside? Get it out of this game. Benefit of the doubt. Strikers advantage, whatever you want to call it. Let's be sensible about offside. The more technology... Listen, three, four years ago, I was an advocate of technology in football. The matter-of-fact technology that is the goal line technology, absolutely wonderful. Is the ball over the line? Is it not over the line? Perfect. But the VAR and the rulers and the set squares and the compasses that have been brought out for all of this offside nonsense is doing my head in. As a, as a match-going fan, I'm in the stands there. I'm afraid to celebrate a goal... Because is some pedantic little wart in bloody the park down the road going to evaluate my player's hair on his knee was offside? Absolutely, head's gone, ruining football. Ryan. I hate pundits in general, but specifically Jermaine Genus. I absolutely despise Jermaine Genus. Pundits in general, but Jermaine Genus specifically. He is by... Oh, he's, he's just awful. He is absolutely shocking at his job. He had an absolutely awful career at Spurs. Retired early because he couldn't hack it. And then decided he wanted to be even worse as a pundit for BT Sport, mostly. Richard, go on. It us. What's the worst uh, thing about football? I hate thick opposition fans. There's nothing that gets on my nerves more than supporters of other clubs... They don't understand the rules of the game. They don't know anything about the history of the team they support. They don't know what financial fair play means. They don't understand about English law. They don't understand about anything. I'm surprised they can get up in the morning. And yet they opine and put out TikToks about stuff they know absolutely nothing about. And most of them make Jermaine Genus look like Albert Einstein. It just really just gets on my nerves. You're not wrong. Mainly Liverpool fans who uh never been. They don't even know where Stanley Park is. I mean, I keep this one guy that comes in our comment section all the time. Just ask him where's Stanley Park, mate. I don't know what's a Stanley Park exactly, Martin. It's good to see we're making friends here in the Mancunian way. Um, <laughs> the media. Hey, the media has never had such a bigger influence on our game as what it is right now. And the scary thing is, clubs' histories have been rewritten by the media because Manchester City have a rich history. You won't think it because everyone now believes that because it's been written in the Sun and the Daily Mail and everyone else that City were bought out in 2008 and that's when they started winning trophies. You know, load of absolute waffle. And the media needs to be held accountable in this country for what they write. We have journalists who are absolutely disgraceful, some of the stuff. It's near on racism and they get away with it. Mm, not bad. I'll tell you what, right, I'm going to grind some gears now. I hate footballers. Ooh. The thing I hate most about football is footballers. For some reason, a floppy-haired idiot from the Midlands, Jack Grealish, is now a fashion icon. He looks stupid. He's about three foot six. He's got the calves of a bloody cyclist, which whoever has any woman ever got out of bed in the morning and gone, bloody hell, I wish I was married to a cyclist. Nobody ever. Dot com. His haircut's crap. They, like, they years all have ago, awful fashion senses because they have too much years money. 100 years ago, you went to a football match on a Saturday because you were watching people just like you playing the sport. Now they all look like idiots. All of them. Every single one of them. Children's. Right? The football kits are crap. Not because and when they, when they get out of the games and they're all going back to the coach afterwards, they've all got headphones on. They're ignoring the fans. They're ignoring the manager because they're all listening to Beyonce or some other shite. They all wear stupid hats. 
They've all got stupid pants that they can't pull up properly. They can't tie a belt properly and they're all wearing stupid shoes. They all look like absolute idiots. And the problem is that people look at them and go, yeah, that's how I want to look. But the problem is when you go out in Manchester or you go out in a big city, you see young lads dressed like footballers, but they haven't got the money. So they just like like bell ends. Ryan. If Phil Foden was at a footballer, he'd be sat outside Mackey's on a bike. The full track suit. He wouldn't have a job. Come on, Rob. So what what I hate most there, Rob, is I hate referees, which kind of goes back to your point a little bit with VAR, but I just hate specifically Premier League referees. They are absolutely incompetent at every single level, which is why VAR has been brought into the Prem, partially. But even with that, they still don't know how to use it correctly, which I think you were mentioning the offsides, but the offsides aren't necessarily the main problem for me. It is those decisions where it still comes down to the choice of the referee and either don't utilise VAR correctly or they've just, for the majority of the time, they just make bad decisions on the pitch in general. When you go and look at other leagues across the world, you don't get this level of incompetence that you get in the Prem. What I hate the most about football is the Americanization of football. I think that this has come partly from Sky, partly from, you know, the owners of the Evil Red Three. The Americanization means let's get rid of the smaller clubs. Let's get rid of promotion and relegation. Let's make it purely a business about long-term profit flows. Let's take money out of the games. Let's put the brand ahead of the football. Let's sign players like United do because of their TikToks or they come on and play the piano and get a million YouTube views. Thing in football is insipid. It's even dripping into the games with like music and jingles being played and people getting, you know, chicken chipotle wraps when you want a bloody pie or getting some Bad fancy skittles. kind of lager when you want a pint of bitter. It is an Americanization that is going to ruin football as we know it. It already is. It's destroying the game. And for all the stuff our owners get from the media, etc., it is the American <laughs> owners and the Americanization of the game that is killing it. And they need to, you know, Make a rule to stop Americans owning football teams. Fact and Ban Budweiser from the UK. Martin. Far too much money. You know, when I was a kid, not long ago, I am on a young, but Available. there was talk of the first, you know, hundred thousand pound a week footballer. And we're now virtually at the first million pound a week footballer. W- w- what's next? Are we at the two million, three million? You know, where do we go from here? Where do we go? And unfortunately, we've seen teams like Berry, Macclesfield nearly go. We've seen teams that had a rich, rich heritage go bye-bye. Leeds United nearly went. Portsmouth nearly went. And it's allowed to happen because too much money in the game. It needs, you know, around the world, even in rugby league and rugby union, it's all salary caps. It's looked after. In football, it's just, where does it end? Well, I think my third point is probably a bit of an expansion on the point that Rich and Martin have made to do with money. And it's more specifically the price that it costs for for fans, really. Um, Obviously, this comes down to how much the money influences the game now from the Americanization point of view and uh, what Rich said. And how Martin says that it influences the game. But like for a match going fan, realistically, everything just costs far too much for a lot of fans. And they're priced out of going to see the football they want to go and see. Like it's not sustainable for the at the people that support a club. Martin said there a minute ago about football clubs going out of business and money in football and all the rest of it. If everybody supported their local team, clubs won't go out of business. So if Martin supported Oldham, Ryan supported Carlisle, Rich supported Sydney Wanderers or whatever the hell they're called. No, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, 
There's too many Premier League fans out there in the world that have got a granddad who went on, on a day trip to Manchester once or an uncle that slept a night in an hotel in London and that's why they support Chelsea. Like, and it's okay, even if you support a Manchester City or a Manchester United or a Liverpool or an Arsenal or whatever, when they're not playing, go and watch your local team. Go and watch your local team. It'll cost you a tenner. Mm. It'll cost yeah, you a tenner and you'll have a great day. If you can, go and support your local team. It's fine. Watch City as well. Watch City play in Europe. Watch City play in the Cups or whatever. But if you've got a team near you, go and watch them as well. Support them. Support them. Because they need you. If you want to keep football alive at the grassroots, listen, not every future superstar comes out the City Academy or the United Academy or the Liverpool Academy. Some of them come out of Carlisle's Academy. Some of them come out of... No, they don't. <clears throat> some of them comes out of Oldham's Academy. Some of them come out of, you know, the smaller clubs' academies. And those clubs need to stay in existence. So if you live near one of them and there's a City game not on or a Liverpool game not on, go and watch your local team. Gentlemen, that's it. Rant over. We've made no friends. We've made a bunch of enemies. Thank you for your time. We'll see you in the next one.